Hey, have you ever seen those websites that show a rotating object? They're pretty neat, aren't they? Anyway, you'd be surprised at how easy it is to do this type of thing with Swish Max or Swish Mini Max. Apart from Swish Max or Swish Mini Max, you'll also need a camera with a tripod and a turntable. I made my turntable from a peanut butter jar and a takeaway food container. But if you have a larger or heavier object, you might want to check out Amazon.com or eBay, both of which have some options. Okay, the basic procedure is you get your turntable and you put your object on top, take a photo, rotate it about 15 degrees, take another photo, rotate, take a photo and so on. You'll end up with about 25 to 30 photos. Once you have taken your photographs, connect your camera to your computer and copy them across to a local folder. Modern digital cameras are able to capture very high quality images. Although this is generally a good thing, it does mean that the image file sizes are generally too large to be easily deployed on a web page. For example, my camera, in its lowest resolution setting, still creates image files of about 240 kilobytes each. As we intend to use about 25 to 30 of these images, it would result in a web page of about 7 megabytes in size. So we need to reduce the image size and quality. Fortunately, most cameras come with utility software to do this. I'm going to resize my images so that they are no larger than 400 by 400 and reduce the JPEG quality to low. This increases the image compression. Altering the image in this way reduces the size from 240 kilobytes per image to about 35 kilobytes per image. This is much more manageable. Okay, open Swish Max and start with a blank movie. Then go to Insert, Import Image, and select the images that we want to import. Select the top image, then scroll down, and using Shift, left mouse click, Select the bottom image to select all of them and press open. All of the images will now be imported. While the images are still selected, check the target checkbox in the properties panel. Now with the images still selected, right click on the top image and select grouping, group as movie clip and name the movie clip images. If you expand the movie clip, you'll see that all of the images are still there. Scroll down to the bottom and note the number of the lowest numbered image. It's PC184864. We'll use this later on. Now let's save our movie, so go File, Save As, and call it something that's meaningful to you. I'm going to use the name Chicken. And press the Save button. OK, next add the scroll bar. Select Scene 1, then select Components, and drag a scroll bar onto the stage. Select the Parameters panel, and change the direction to Horizontal. Change the scroll bar length to something useful, say 380 and drag it to roughly where you want it to be in the movie. For the window size, set a value of 1. For the document size, enter the number of pictures that you've taken. In my case, I've taken 26. And for the step size, enter 1. Scroll down a little bit and have a look at the event notification group. Here, Make sure that the event function is called set scroll. We'll use this later. Now if you look back at the outline panel, you should see the scene with our scroller and our images. We now need to add some actions to our movie so that the scroll bar movements will cause the appropriate image to be displayed. Select scene 1 and select the actions panel. Personally, I find the action panel in this location to be a bit cramped so I like to dock it next to the Layout panel. Do this by dragging it across to the Layout panel. To make the chicken rotate as the scroll bar slider is dragged, we need to define an event function named SetScroll. To do this, use addEvent define a function. In the function field, enter the name of the function, which is set scroll. Press the tab key to complete the name entry. 
Press the plus button in the args area. Add a parameter n, n being for name. This is the name of the calling object. If a function is called in response to a user moving the slider, the value of the parameters will be the name of the scroll bar. In this case, scroll silver. Add a second parameter, v, for value. This is a floating point number representing the position of the scroll bar slider. As the scroll bar window size was defined as 26, this value will vary from 0 to 25. Now that we have defined the function, we need to add some actions. The actions we define are performed every time the function is called. Press the Add Action button and ensure that the Show Advanced Actions option is checked. Go Statements, declare variable. In the Name field, enter POS. In the Type field, select Number. In the Value field, enter math.round v. This converts the parameter v into an integer 0 to 25. Add another variable, i, for index. Its type is also number. For value, use 184866 plus pos. Note that 184866 is the number corresponding to the lowest numbered image. This line converts the current slider position to a number that identifies the image to be displayed. For the third and final action, add a statement, call a function. For the target field, add the name images. This is the name of our movie clip containing the images. To refer to an individual image within the movie clip, refer to it by name using an open square bracket, its name, and a closing square bracket. The name is constructed using PC, the prefix, and then appending the image number, I, and underscore JPG, which is the image suffix. The term add is used to concatenate the three items to form the image name. For the function name, enter swap depths. Note that the name is case sensitive. For the parameter, use 10. This will cause the target image to be displayed above the other images. Now select the bottom brace of the function and add a new event, unloading this object. This event is used to set up initial conditions for the movie. Add an action using statements, call a function. For the function name, enter set scroll. For the first argument, enter main. This indicates that the function is being called by the main movie, as opposed to the scroll bar in response to an event. For the second parameter, enter zero. This sets the initial image to be displayed. We have now completed the action script. Click the Layout tab to return to the normal view. Press the Play button to test the movie. Wow, it works! Finally, it's probably good practice to add a preloader, as our 26 30 kilobyte images will still cause file size of about 780 kilobytes. This will take some time to load over a dial-up connection. Stop the preview, select Scene 1, and set the Stop Playing at End checkbox. Minimize the scene in the outline panel. Insert a new scene and rename it scene underscore preloader. Set the stop playing at end checkbox and use the arrow in the outline panel to move it up, making it the first scene. From the components panel, drag load a circle onto the stage. Change the when loaded parameter from demo mode to play next scene. Retest the movie. That pretty much completes the tutorial. Additional information can be found on our blog page at http colon slash slash blog dot swish zone dot com. Enter chicken into the search engine if you have trouble finding this specific tutorial.